Welcome to section 8.5 day one, factoring by grouping. Today's objective is to factor high degree polynomials by grouping. To do factoring by grouping, one of the things we need to be able to do is find common factors, the greatest common factor of a polynomial. So factors are things that when multiplied get to a larger term. So we're factoring out a GCF, we're gonna find the greatest common factor. We wanna be able to divide these things out of our terms. So what is the largest number and the largest variable that is common to the terms we have? In this case, we have 27y squared and 18y. We wanna find the largest number that divides evenly into 27 and 18, and the largest variable that divides evenly into y squared and y. Between 27 and 18, the largest number that divides out of both of them evenly is nine, and the largest variable is just a y. So when we look at numbers, we look for the largest number, and then when we look at variables, we look at the lowest exponent of the common variables. So in this case, we can pull a nine y out of both, and then we write it as nine y times three y, and if you multiply those together, you would get back to 27y squared. The other term is 9y times 2. And if you multiply those, you would get back to 18y. The next thing we do is we basically do distribution in reverse. Since 9y is common to both terms, we can pull it out. And the way we do that is we bring it out front. And then we put what's remaining, the 3y and the 2, in parentheses. And this is using distribution in reverse. Now we have factored out the GCF, and the GCF in this case is 9y. It's the greatest common factor between 27y squared and 18y. And if you go and distribute this, what we have here, you should get back to what you started with. So you can always double check to see if you get it right. But we're looking for the largest number and the smallest exponent for common variables that we can pull out of all the terms. And that is our GCF. So let's look at a couple of these. We want to pull out the GCF of 15n to the fourth minus 5n cubed plus 40n. So look for the largest number that's common that we can divide out of 15, negative 5, and 40. Well, the largest number that's common to all of them is 5. We then look at our variables. We have an n to the fourth, an n to the third, and an n. The lowest variable exponent we have is n to the first power, so we can pull out an n from every one. And then if you look at this, if we factor this completely, we'd have 15n to the fourth, and if we pull and divide out 5n, 15 divided by 5 is 3, n to the fourth divided by n is n cubed. Then we look at the next one we have, we want to pull out a 5n, so I'm going to have a 5n here, and if I divide negative five by five, I get a negative one. I take n cubed divided by n, we get n squared. So we have a negative one n squared. In our last term we have five n, and if we pull that out of 40 n, 40 divided by five is eight, and n divided by n is just one, so we have an eight here. So for our GCF for number one, the, the common thing that's for all three terms is a 5n. And then if you look through our terms that are still left in parentheses, a 3n cubed, a negative 1n squared, and 8, there is nothing that's common between all three terms. So we have found the GCF, and the GCF is 5n. All right, for the next one, we have 4x to the fifth plus 12x to the fourth minus 8x squared. We look for the largest number that can divide evenly out of everything. And the largest number that divides evenly out of 4, 12, and 8 is 4. And then we look for the common variable between all three terms that has the lowest exponent, and that would be x squared. And if we divide 4x squared out of 4x to the fifth, 4 divided by 4 is just 1 x to the fifth divided by x squared is x cubed. For our middle term, we're going to pull out that 4x squared again. We divide 12 by 4, we get 3. x to the fourth over x squared is x squared. For our last one, we have the 4x squared we're pulling out again. 
And if this helps you guys, you can do this. You could write this as over 4x squared, over 4x squared. And this might help you see how to pull things out. We have negative 8 over 4. We have a negative 2 left after we divide out the negative, the 4. And then x squared over x squared is just 1. So we're left with this. So our GCF for this one is 4x squared. If we were told to factor this, take out the GCF and factor, we would have our 4x squared that's common to all three terms. And then we would have left over inside parentheses would be an x cubed. A th we have a plus 3x squared. And then we have a minus 2 because of plus a negative 2. This is minus 2 here. And that is our factored form. So if you're told to factor it, you would have the what's on the right. If you're just told to find the GCF, we would have 4x squared. So our last one, we're going to look for the GCF, and we're going to factor this one again. We look for a number that's common to all of them. The only thing that's common to all three terms is 1. We don't have to actually write that. Um, we have a y to the 6th, a y to the 4th, and a y squared. The lowest exponent is y squared, so we can factor out a y squared. So I'm going to do this like I did above. If I have to divide out a y squared, do this a little faster this way sometimes, we have y squared. And then if we divide y to the 6th by y squared, we're left with a y to the 4th. If we take negative 3y 4th over y squared, we're left with a negative 3y squared. If we take 5y squared over y squared, we're just left with 5. So our GCF in this case is y squared. It's something you pull out of every term. And then the factored form would be that y squared multiplied by y to the 4th minus 3y squared plus 5 in parentheses. We need to be able to find GCFs to do factoring by grouping. Right here it says factor the four-term polynomial by grouping. And we have a three-step process basically on how to do this. So the first step is to group the first and last terms. So the first two terms get grouped to one group, and the last two terms get grouped in the other. Then secondly, we're going to look at each of the groups separately and find the GCF for each group. So we're going to factor the GCF out of the first two terms and of the last two terms. So between 45z cubed and 20z squared, we can pull out a 5z squared. And between 9z and 4, we can pull out a 1. And this was what happens when you do that. We have the 5z squared that comes out front, and then you have 9z plus 4 in parentheses. You pull out a 1 out of the second group, and you're left with 9z plus 4. What's very important when we factor by grouping is the 9z plus 4 part, the part in parentheses, it must match. This and this have to be the same for you to be able to factor by grouping. If they are not the same, either it's not factorable or you've made a mistake when you found your GCF. So they must match. If they match, we do what we call, again, the reverse distributive property. We can pull out a 9z plus 4 out of both of these groups, and that is one of my factors, one of my binomial factors. Once we pull the 9z plus 4 out, we are left with a 5z squared and a 1. That becomes the second factor group. So 5z plus 1, they come out and form the second factor group or the second binomial. So we have 5z squared plus 1 multiplied by 9z plus 4. If we were to check this and redistribute or use the FOIL method, we should get back to what we started with, the 45z cubed plus 20z squared plus 9z plus 4. The big key with this when you do factor by grouping, you group the first two terms and the last two terms, find the GCF for each, and then when you find the GCF, you make sure that the you have a matching set. In this case, a 9z plus 4 matches 9z plus 4. So we can pull that out as a factor group. And then the 5z squared in this case plus 1 is remaining. It's the other. We're going to do a few of these so you can see how this works. Find the GCF of the first two terms and the GCF of the last two terms for each polynomial. So all we're going to do is practice 
that first part, finding the GCF of the first two and last two terms. So if you group these and group these, what is the greatest common factor of 12x cubed and 3x squared? The largest number that divides evenly between 12 and 3 is 3. And our lowest exponent of our common variable x is 2, so x squared. That's the GCF for the first group. Then we have 20x and 5. What evenly divides out of both of them? Just 5. Since there is not a variable with the second term, we can only divide each of these by 5. For number 2, again, we're just looking for the GCF of our first group and our last group. When you have a minus sign in between the two middle terms, you have 16r squared minus 9r, you need to make sure when you group, you in, that negative sign goes with the third term. And then you put a plus sign in between. That is very, very important when you have a minus there. That the minus sign goes with the 9 in this case, and then we put a plus between the two groupings. All right, so now we do 2r cubed plus 16r squared. The largest number that goes into both is 2. And the lowest exponent is our 2r squared. So we have 2r squared. That's a GCF of the first group, the greatest common factor. Then we look at the next group. We have a negative 9r and a negative 72. We want to pull out a negative because that first term in our second group is a negative number. So we want to pull a negative number out. In this case, we have negative 9 and negative 72. They're both divisible by negative 9. So that would be our GCF. Only the 9R has, or the negative 9R has an R in it. So the only thing we can pull out of both of those terms is a negative 9. All right, so that's just practicing pulling out GCFs of our first and last groups. Now we're going to go on and actually factor. So factor by grouping. We're going to use that three-step process we saw earlier. And what we're going to do is take our first group, put them in parentheses, take our second group, put them in parentheses. Now we look for the GCF of both the first and last groups. So what's common between 10 and 25 that we can divide out evenly is a five. And when we can pull out an M cubed and M squared is M squared. And then we're gonna have in parentheses what's left over when we divide things out. If we take 10 M cubed and divide out five m squared and we're dividing 10 divided by 5 is 2 m cubed divided by m squared is m take our second term in our first group if you divide it by m 5m squared you're left with just 5 25 over 5 is 5 m squared over m squared cancels out to 1 for our second group we look for our largest number that goes into 8 and 20 and the largest number divides out evenly is 4 since we only have an M in the first term, we cannot divide on any M's. In parentheses, 8 divided by 4 is 2. The M stays. And then 20 divided by 4 is 5. All right, so we pulled the GCF out of both groups. Now we need to see if we have a matching parentheses. And we do. 2M plus 5 and 2M plus 5 match. So that is going to be one of our factor groups. And the other one is going to be what's on the outside. This 5m squared plus 4 is our second factor group. So we have 5m squared plus 4 multiplied by 2m plus 5. Remember when we're factoring, factors are things that multiply together to get to something larger. So these are binomials that are being multiplied together. So there should not be any pluses or minuses between the actual parentheses. So the next one we're going to do, we're going to group again. So we're going to group our first two. We're going to group our second two. Make sure that negative sign stays with the 24. That is a very important piece. We look at 64 and 40. We look for the largest number that divides evenly out of both. And it is 8. The lowest exponent on a common variable is d squared. Leaves behind 64 divided by 8 is 8. 
d cubed over d squared is d. Divide negative 40 by 8, we get negative 5. d squared, if we wrote it over d squared, is just 1. So we have 8d minus 5. Then we're going to, on the second group, since our first term is a negative number, we're going to pull out a negative factor. So what evenly divides out of 24 and 15? The highest number that comes out of both is 3, but we want to pull the negative 3 out. And if we divide this by negative 3 and this by negative 3, we would have an 8. Negative 24 divided by negative 3 is positive 8. So 8d. 15 divided by negative 3 is negative 5. Again, we do grouping. We need to make sure that our parentheses here match. If they do, they are one of our factor groups because we're going to undistribute them basically. And the other piece is 8d squared and the minus 3. They are the second group. So 8d squared minus 3. One of those questions you might have, does it really matter if the 8d squared minus 3 is the first grouping or the second grouping? It does not matter. We usually do put the higher exponent in the group in the first spot, but it does not matter. So you could write this as 8d minus 5 times 8d squared minus 3, and it would be correct. So this is factoring by grouping. We group the first two terms, we group the last two terms, find the GCF for each group. When we pull those out, we want to make sure the parentheses that are remaining match. If they match, that's a factor group. And then the remaining part, the GCFs we pulled out of those two groups are the second factor group. Here is the last one we're going to do today. This one you notice has two different variables, but we use the same process as we would do if there was just one variable. We are still looking for common variables. We still do the numbers the same way. First thing, group. First two, last two. Again, we have a negative in front of the 35. Make sure that negative stays with the 35. We put a plus in between. Now we're gonna look for what is the largest number that goes into 30 and 24. And it is six. And then we look at the variables. What is the common variable between end of the fifth and end of the third M? Well, they only have n's in common. Since n is in common, we'll take n and we'll take the lowest exponent, which is 3. So if we divide this by 6n cubed and this by 6n cubed, what's left in parentheses would be 30 divided by 6, which is 5, n to the fifth over n cubed, which is n squared. We have plus 24 divided by 6, which is 4, n to the cubed over n to the cubed cancels out to 1, and we're left with the m. Then we have our plus sign here. Between negative 35 and negative 27, again, our first number in that second group is a negative, so we want to pull out a negative factor. And the largest number that divides evenly out of 35 and 28 is 7. So we're going to plus a negative 7 here. And then we look at our variables. The only common variable between the two is m, and its lowest exponent is m squared. So we're going to factor out a negative 7m squared. That is our GCF. So we're going to divide both of these terms by negative 7m squared. Negative, 30, uh, negative 35 divided by negative 7 is 5. n squared m squared over m squared the m squared will cancel out, leaving n squared. We have negative 28 divided by negative 7. This is a positive 4. And then m cubed over m squared, we are left with an m. We then look to make sure that we have matching parentheses. And we do. We have 5n squared plus 4m. And then on the outside, we have, since we're matching, we have these on the outside. They are the second factor group, 6n cubed minus 7m squared. All right, you don't have to show like I did on the top where I'm showing I'm dividing out 6n cubed. If you can see what's going on, you don't need to write that. But if it helps you, do it. Um, sometimes it helps keep things organized by doing it that way. 
That is your call, your choice. That is it for section 8.5, day one. Uh, make sure when you do these, you're showing your work and how you're pulling these GCFs out. Show that you have the common groupings so you can pull that as a factor group. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.